So this is my long term review of the Honda NT1100. Honda UK alone with the bike for I think it's just come up to a month now the bike's got to go back this week and I've been around France on the bike Honda asked me if I wanted to tour France on the bike and it'd be rude not to so I wonder how I've got on with the bike what do I think of it it's brilliant it is absolutely brilliant I didn't think it was going to be this good to be honest I really didn't now my first impressions of this bike was the seating position but the bars are a little bit lower than the elbows which makes it a very comfortable upward position you can sit forward or you can slouch back you don't get any aching or strain on the shoulders or the shoulder blades where on summer box with the higher bars you do on this you don't it seems to be just perfect that underbar position we've got cruise control on the right hand side and the stop start button on the left hand side we've got our navigation system where we can scroll through all the menus change the settings change the rider mode I'm not going to go full into the spec of how the display works but the display is absolutely brilliant even with the bright sun on it it's fantastic it's clearly visible in all weather and so at the moment I've got my phone connected on CarPlay. So what I'm using is Google Maps to navigate through Bridge North. I know where I'm going, which is so we can see the display on there. There's also the menu you can use on CarPlay for your phone. So you can select your music. You can actually go into the settings of the bike and change the display on there. But that's absolutely brilliant. I love that Apple CarPlay. But what I found was the trick is the phone has to be connected to the bike via its charge lead. So the charge lead goes in there and then what you have to do for CarPlay to work you have to have your headset connected. So I've got the Cardo Pack Talk. So you have to have the headset connected for CarPlay to work. The phone's connected to CarPlay and my headset's connected to the CarPlay where previously on my VFR my headset connected to my phone so they both connect now to the bike instead but the image is beautiful on there of Google Maps another thing I found absolutely brilliant on the bike is the screen I've got the screen in its highest setting and normally I can't ride my VFR without earplugs in and if I'm talking I normally have to have the visor shut because of the wind noise but I found on this I've got no earplugs in at all now and that screen cuts out so much wind noise I mean I imagine there's still wind noise getting in on the microphone now but it cuts out so much it's absolutely brilliant and then you've got the little side wings the deflectors which deflect the wind I can feel the wind there I can feel it pushing my hand there so it's blowing the wind up over my shoulders instead of it hitting me on my shoulders so those work absolutely brilliant they do to be sure I didn't think they was going to do much but when you put your hand up into the turbulence it's surprising how much deflection it puts on the bike it's got the same engine as the Africa Twin a few slight tweaks nothing major but it basically is the Africa Twin engine so I can't wait to try the Africa Twin because this engine is absolutely it's beautiful it's got enough power the engine braking is amazing on it you can change all the engine braking traction control and the power the power is absolutely perfect for me and it's so smooth so smooth this model's got the center stand the comfort seat and the quick shifter on it those are extras but they are fitted to this bike i fell in love with the quick shifter i'm gonna have a big shock on that when i get back to the vfr and the big thing on this is the seat this has got the comfort seat and the seat is a dream it is absolutely beautiful on your bum i mean we did seven days tour in france uh, we mainly picked back roads so it was about nine hours a day we was in the saddle 
and I've got to say it was only from about day six onwards I was starting to get a bit sore and that's purely just because of the immense time I'd been on the bike but comfort I've never known a seat like it it's quite wide at the back underneath your bum cheeks so you've got plenty of spread to cover your bum and then as it comes between your legs it's quite thin so you don't have so much pressure pressing on the inside of your legs it seems to flick over no problem for it into any corner it really does handle amazing so impressed with the handling of it i ain't going to want to go back to my vfr being this comfortable for nine hours a day in the saddle takes some beating but this bike did it and the only issue i experienced was my right hand I don't know if you can see now, I'll try and get it on camera. Now what I do, it's just natural to me, I don't even think about it. I always ride with this finger covering the brake, even on the motorway. Even when I had cruise control on. So I'm gripping the accelerator with the rest of my hand, but I always cover the front brake. It's something I don't even think about, I just seem to do it naturally. And I note on the outside of my hand, on the scaphoid, after about two to three hours, my hand was aching a bit, I'd have to keep flexing it. The clutch is light and smooth. It took a bit getting used to the throttle, because it's so responsive instantly. Where on my VF4, I was used to a bit of a bit of free play before the throttle had rolled on, and I kind of got used to that. Where on this, you've only got to slightly touch it, and it, it's accelerating straight away. The exhaust and the sound of it it's done it. I love the sound of it and that's a standard can for me personally I would not change the can I would not put an aftermarket can on it I don't need any more power at the bike I think the sound is absolutely amazing it sounds brilliant I've got a 12 volt cigarette light to this side and then on this side is the USB there's another display if I look over my phone over the top where it's got the speedo here so if you've got Apple CarPlay on you can still see your speed. Cruise control's lovely on it, I love the cruise control. That come in handy in France because there was quite a few long straight roads. Long, long straight roads. The panniers are absolutely brilliant on it. One side's bigger than the other. Obviously you've got the cutout on the one side where the exhaust is. But the good thing Honda's done is they've made the bags to compensate that. So the bag on the left hand side is a lot deeper so instead of them being just standard bags the same depth they've actually made the bag wider on the left hand side because the pannier is bigger and that's the bag I used to put all my clothes in in France I got a whole week's clothes in that one pannier the right hand side pannier which was a little bit smaller it's not a lot smaller and a little bit smaller I used to keep my waterproofs in the locks so I really used that one for the stuff I wasn't taking off the bike of a night and you have the frame for the rear top box this one hasn't got the top box with it but there's no there's no bracket or anything what has to fit onto that the top box fits straight onto that mount the power is beautiful that was in six gear so I didn't knock down the gear then to overtake I just opened the throttle and it had enough beans in it to fly past that van and I think the good thing with it was use it for the week in France which allowed me to really see what the bike was like nine hours a day I mean some days it was 36 degrees heat and the screen being that high on the motorway it was that good at protecting me that I wasn't getting any air flowing so I did have to lower the screen on some of the motorways just to get a bit of fresh air into me the one thing I've noticed which surprised me was pushing this and the VFR in and out of my garage the VFR was heavier it was heavier to manoeuvre the front brake is amazing I do notice the front does dive down a little bit when you brake heavy it seems to absorb the deacceleration quite good so the wind protection as well from this nice wide tank area keeps all the wind off your lower part of your body you've got the lower fairing parts what stop the water road surface coming up onto your feet and also deflects 
cold air up your legs that works really well that does you can adjust the rear suspension you can make it harder or softer it's not got electronic you can adjust the preload just down here on the front but I think how the bike set up at the moment which I think is factory standard seems to be just right for me I'll demonstrate the quick shifter how smooth the quick shifter is there's no snatching no jumping it's absolutely beautiful So we've been second gear, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, that's it, that's how smooth it is. And to go down, it's the same, there you go, fifth, fourth, no snatching, no diving. It's absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful and even when you go right down low in the revs still got plenty of pull that's a nice slow corner thank you oh just full of beans so much torque and it's very very easy as well to maneuver and ride at very very slow speeds the bike's not top heavy at all. I think I've got the centre of gravity just right with the way to the engine and its position. And standing up as well. Standing up to ride is great on it. The bike feels so stable. Obviously you get a lot more wind noise coming in. But it's ideal right now today. I think it's about 25, 26 degrees today. So just to stand up and get a bit of airflow through the mesh jacket lovely and the rear seat the rear seat it steps up quite a bit and it's nice because it's it's something to push against when you're accelerating hard you don't slide on the seat I've got to say you don't slide on the seat at all actually it's quite it's quite grippy the seat is the material and you don't feel a lot of heat either from the engine it's quite good at dispersing the heat when we had 36 degrees in France when you were stationary in traffic you could feel a little bit but not a lot at all, I was quite surprised with that I was expecting with the engine being so exposed and open you get quite a bit of heat travelling up the legs but you didn't and it just seemed you can throw it over you just want to stick to the bends it's absolutely beautiful in corners It's got a very smooth steer, but you can also be quite aggressive with the bars and turn quite sharp. And that is my Honda NT1100 review. I didn't want to go into technical, I wanted to go on what the bike felt like, what it felt like to me, what was it like for my riding stall. I'm used to sports bikes in the VFR 800. And touring on this, it certainly has opened my eyes to the type and style of bike for long distance touring. So I've enjoyed it, it's absolutely beautiful bike, I want one, I would have one. Honda, you're more than welcome to give me this one if you've got nothing to do with it. But I loved it, I thought it was absolutely brilliant and it's that good old Honda feeling where you don't really have to adjust too much to the bike you get on it and you kind of you fit into it straight away that's the one thing Honda have got absolutely spot on how they connect with the rider so all in all I think the bike is absolutely amazing I've absolutely loved it and it is going to be a shame this week to take the bike back it really is would I buy one of these bikes? yes I think I would I would like a different colour the only thing I would probably change on the bike is a more vibrant colour scheme I think something like the Africa Twin the white, red and blue would look amazing on this just to give it that little bit of extra jazz and if you haven't been on one or had a test ride on one I strongly recommend you do
that's one of the last rides I will have on this girl before she goes back to wander. Let's enjoy the last bit of this ride while I've got her. And this was me on the beautiful NT1100. Thank you Honda UK for the loan of this bike. It's been amazing. It made a great tour, an amazing tour.